also those who may be watching with us live or watching later. Welcome. Uh, a few notes on the prayers. Bart Dominic came home from the hospital last Sunday evening. Um, so that was a really, really good thing. Uh, he is still recovering, so please continue to keep him in your prayers. Are there any other additions to the prayer list this morning? Very good. Then let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this time and for this place. We thank you, Lord, for all the gifts that you give us, and we ask you now, Lord, to come into this place to fill us with your Holy Spirit. Touch our hearts where we need to be touched this morning. Touch our lives, that we may continue to grow in faith, love, and hope. Amen. Would you please stand for the brief order for confession and forgiveness as you are able. We begin in the name in which we are baptized. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond all our days. Amen. St. John writes in 1 John, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend, amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Jesus Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first hymn is Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 32. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, how stiff necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Who should the Egyptians say, why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them into the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is from chapter 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep, deep within me, and, and would have me no wisdom, wisdom deep within. Remove my sin with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Our second reading is from the first Timothy, chapter 1. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and pointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience 
making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of ages, immortal, invincible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness? and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he is found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying with them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who needs no repentance. Or what woman, having lost ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is more joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. This time I'd like to invite the children to come forward. It's time for Colony Kids. It's time for Colony Kids. It's time for, time for, time for Colony Kids. Good morning, good morning, good morning. That's a sale, that's green. That is, it's green. And if you look, there's green back there, and there's green here. We are in the season of green. Yes, and we will have green for, for quite some time yet. So, all right. Now, do you all remember a song we sang at Sunday at, at Vacation Bible School? I just want to be a... Sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. Right? Did you recognize that story I just read to everybody? It was one of our stories from Vacation Bible School. It's the story about, Jesus, about a shepherd who loses a sheep. And what does, what does the shepherd do? He finds it. What does he do after he finds it? He puts it in the pen, but what else does he do? He has a party, right? You want to show me your party? You want to get up and show me your party? Woo-hoo! There you go, Cohen. Woo-hoo! All right. In this story, Jesus is telling us that he wants to make sure nobody gets lost. Now, Jesus is sitting and he's eating with, with people that other people don't like. People who are mean, right? And they're like, well, why is Jesus eating with those people? And then Jesus tells those stories. And he's trying to tell, remind the people that Jesus loves everybody, right? Even the mean people. Even the bullies. Jesus loves the boys too, yeah, we may not like them, right? But Jesus loves them. And Jesus goes to look for those who get lost. And when he finds them, he has a party. Isn't that good to know? Have you ever gotten lost? 
No. No. It's scary to get lost. It is pretty scary to get lost. Yes. So, especially if you like if you're in a store and you don't know where your mom or dad is, that can be pretty scary. But you know that your mom or dad's going to come find you, right? And you know that if you get lost, Jesus is going to come find you. What do you think it means to get lost from Jesus? Well, you know that Jesus can find you even when you're little, right? Oh, big trucks can find you because they're bigger. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the gospel according to Tonka. <laughs> All right. Well, let's say a little prayer and then thank Jesus for, for coming and finding us. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you will never let us get lost, that you will always come find, to come and find us. And we thank you, Lord, that you have a party when you find us because you love us so much and you want all of your sheep, all of your children, all of your people to be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I just want to be a sheep, bop, bop, bop. I just want to be a sheep, bop, bop, bop. <laughs> That's probably about the look I deserve. <laughs> You guys can go back into your mom and dad now, okay? All right. <laughs> that pastor is crazy is what they're thinking. And they're not wrong. <laughs> Grace you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son. Amen. The first thing I want to say this morning is that the grace of God is absurd. It's absurd. It doesn't make any sense. It is illogical. One might even say crazy. When I say the grace of God, I mean specifically the unconditional love of God. Unconditional as in the promise that there is nothing we could ever do that would cause God to cease loving us. And can I have a click on that <clears throat> PowerPoint? This is not my opinion. This comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. For I am convinced that neither life nor death nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, not even sin. But the grace of God is more than just love. The grace of God is the incredible gift of forgiveness, a gift which comes with no strings attached, a gift offered to all people. Our two parables give us examples of the absurdity of God's grace. If you have a hundred sheep and you lose one, would you leave the 99 to go in search of the one? But in this parable, the shepherd goes out to find the lost sheep. And when he returns home with his lost lamb, he invites his friends to celebrate with him, to party. And then we have the story of the lost coin. Now, mind you, this is not chump's change. This is not a quarter or a half dollar. This coin is worth about a day's wage. And so, like anyone, she loses some significant amount of money. She goes crazy looking for that. 
turning over the furniture, trying to find the missing money. And when she finds the missing money, she calls her friends and says, come on over, let's have a party. I found my lost money. You ever order pizza for a dozen people? Doesn't go very far these days, does it? A day's wage, a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars in pizza doesn't go very far. Maybe, maybe 10 people, maybe 12. It's absurd that this woman would spend the money that she was looking so hard to find in celebrating that she found it. And yet that's what the gospel tells us, that she invited her friends to celebrate with her. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And that is the point. The grace of God does not make sense. It is absurd. God will go to great lengths to find those who are lost because in the eyes of God, all losses are unacceptable. I mean, if you worked in retail, you know that you're going to have losses. Losses due to damaged product, losses due to shoplifting. Even so, in retail, 1% is considered a pretty good, a pretty good shrinkage, pretty good sense of loss. But in the eyes of God, that is not acceptable because no one is expendable. That includes someone who has addiction issues. They are not expendable. The teenager tricked into prostitution or the poor person forced because they have no other choices. They are not expendable. Even the thief on the cross was not expendable. All people are priceless in the eyes of God. The first verse of chapter 15 gives us the context for these two parables. And it's two of three parables. There's a third parable here that we don't read. And it is a parable that I know you know as well. The parable of the prodigal son. So Jesus tells these three parables, these three stories, while sitting and having a meal with tax collectors and sinners. And nearby, the religious leaders are scoffing, talking in hushed tones, casting their judgment upon Jesus. How can this rabbi call himself a holy man when he eats with sinners. Remember that in the first century, the idea of uncleanliness was passed by with who you sat with, who you ate with. Remember that in sharing a meal, it was generally expected that if, if you invited me to dinner, then it was my responsibility to invite you to dinner next. And they see this wandering rabbi from Galilee opening all sorts of doors to eating and sharing time and being made unclean by these sinners. Tax collectors. Tax collectors were not your average sinner. They were seen as collaborators with the occupiers from Rome. You see, the tax collector had to collect a certain amount for the empire, but then was allowed to collect extra to fill his own pockets. So people perceived him not only as a collaborator working with the enemy, but as a thief who took more than they ought. They had not wandered away accidentally. 
No, they had willingly chosen to turn their backs on their country, on their people, and on their faith. And yet Jesus does not condemn them or shame them. Jesus doesn't glare at them or speak about them in hushed tones. Instead, Jesus sits down and has a meal with them. He connects with them. He socializes with them. Jesus didn't worry about the social ramifications of having a meal with those who were perceived as collaborators and thieves. Jesus wanted them to know that God loved them despite the choices they made in their lives. They are loved by God. Sometimes we as Christians imagine that we have to change before we can come to Jesus. We make it about us and about what we do. But this gospel is clear. It is not us who go seeking God first. It is always God who comes seeking us. God who comes to find us. Lost in the wilderness. Just as he came to Paul on the road to Damascus, when his heart was filled with murderous thoughts towards those who proclaimed Jesus Christ crucified and risen. Jesus didn't wait for Paul to have second thoughts. Jesus confronted Paul, crying out, why do you persecute me? In that same way, Jesus comes looking for us and confronts us with our sin, leading us back to the flock. It's not always like, well, for most of us, we don't have the visions that Paul had. In fact, I don't think I've ever met anyone who has had a visual encounter with the risen Lord on a road somewhere. But rather, God comes to us through loved ones, through friends, and sometimes even strangers. A seminary classmate of mine shared that after he left the military, he started drinking heavily as a way of dealing with the slowness of civilian life. Now, I'm not a teetotaler here. I, I'm, I don't have issues with people partaking of alcohol, but I recognize that there is danger in overindulgence. And at a regular doctor's visit, the VA doctor asked my seminary classmate about his drinking habits. It was the end of the day. It was his last appointment. And so as my classmates shared what was happening in their life and how they had started drinking more than perhaps they should. The doctor asked him, well, where is this leading you? How is this helping you? And then pointed my classmate to a support group for veterans to develop better coping skills in civilian life. Jesus sent that doctor to my friend who was starting to wander down a path that could be very dangerous and led that friend back. That's how God generally works. Sends people to speak to us, sometimes family members, sometimes friends, and sometimes complete strangers, to say, you're on the wrong path. You might want to change directions. I wonder when there's a time in your life where you experience that, 
where someone said something to you or pointed out that maybe you were on a wrong path. Maybe you needed to change direction. What underscores these parables and these stories is that promise that God will always love us. We forget that. We're forgetful people. We forget that Jesus loves us. And David, thank you for playing that prelude this morning. I, you can never, nobody ever gets tired of that song. If you're nine or 109, that song is so meaningful. Yes, Jesus loves us. And God is not an ogre waiting to throw us into the fires of hell if we make a mistake. Jonathan Edwards, the great evangelist from the 18th century, he, he stood up and he preached a sermon about a spider that God was holding, was using the image of somebody holding a spider above a flame and said, that is God holding sinners above a flame. No, that is not God. God is not waiting for us to mess up. Yes, Jonathan Edwards got a lot of converts that day. He scared people into confessing Jesus. But I prefer to preach love. I prefer to remember John 3, 16 for, and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone might believe so they would not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. God sent Jesus, the good shepherd, to go find all the lost sheep. Because our God is a loving father a loving parent who wants what is best for us. Which brings me to the last verse I want to share with you. This is from Isaiah chapter 49, and it is such a beautiful image. Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these might forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palm of my hands. Inscribed. Jesus has inscribed us on the palm of his hands with the nails of the cross. pounded into his hands by the Roman soldiers, inscribed for all of eternity as a sign of God's love for us and for all the world. Amen. Would you please stand and sing, The King of Love My Shepherd Is.
Let us join our voices with the saints of all times and places as we remember our common faith using the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. Your people receive mercy and your grace overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love and give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our ecumenical and interreligious commitments. God of grace, your creation groans as it suffers the impacts of pollution and lack of care. As the seasons change, renew us in the will to protect plants, animals, and habitats. Bless us with bountiful harvests that all may share. God of grace, your world is shattered and the nations rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders so that we may know peace in our world, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. God of grace, your children wander homelessly and the hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost or lonely anxious or depressed, or struggling with addiction or illness. Provide for those in need, especially Pam Anderson, Gloria Beatenball, Tony Chapman, Alice Davis, Bart Dominic, Mark Dunkel, Dottie Ellett, Bernice Fort, Woodrow Frick, Fred Fulmer Jr., Bobby Jean Hall, B. Harrison, Shelby Hartle, Joyce Jaqua, Jordan Leslie, and her parents, David and Karen, Francis Long, Tony Marinovich, Mike McCullough, Keith Pearson, Keith Rankin, Owen Riccio, Andrew Sheely, Bernie Sheely, Tommy Sheely, Kevin Sousa, Ben Taylor, Judy Webb, Pat and Steve Wise, Morgan Word, David Young, and friends and family of Margaret Brackett, for those whom we lift you both loud and in our hearts. God of grace, almighty God, guide us in your love to do ministry in the world, especially through our prayer partners this week, Mount Tabor Lutheran Church, Little Mountain, South Carolina, and their pastor, Reverend Rich, Rich Johnston, we also pray for our presiding bishop, Reverend Elizabeth Eaton, and our synodical bishop, Reverend Jenny Abisher, and their respective staffs. Be present with our companion synods of Columbia, Jap Japan, and the Southwest Diocese of Tanzania. May they all know that you are present in their ministry to those in need. God of grace, your work is done in this congregation with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries of this community that we serve our neighbors and welcome our strangers in your name. God of grace, God of earth and fire, air, water and fire, height and depth, on this anniversary of 9-11, we pray for those who rush in to bring hope help and comfort when others flee to safety, whose mission is to seek and save, serve and protect, and whose presence embodies the protection of the Good Shepherd. Give them caution and concern for one another so that in safety they may do what must be done, 
under your watchful eye. Support them in their courage and dedication so they may continue to save lives, ease pain, and mend the torn fabric of lives and social order. God of grace. Gracious God, grant peace among nations. Make us quick to welcome ventures in cooperation among the peoples of the world so that they may be woven the fabric of a common good too strong to be torn by the evil hands of war. Especially we pray for an end to the war between Ukraine and Russia. God of grace, do a new thing within us. Direct us into encounters that broaden our understanding of the human experience. Amplify voices that are ignored or devalued. Deliver us especially from the scourge of racism. God of grace, your blessed saints who have died now rest in your presence. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share eternal life with you. God of grace, gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardon that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. If you've not placed your offering in the plate as you enter the sanctuary, I invite you to now pass your offering to the center aisle as, it, as the plate is brought forward. Also at this time, if you have leaves for our tree, you can bring them up and tape them to the tree, or you can place those in the offering plate as well. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Would you be seated for just a moment? Uh, announcements this morning. We do have Sunday school starting today. Um, we have the pre-K and K class and the elementary uh, kids class will be downstairs. The adult Sunday school class will also be downstairs. The confirmation class will be in my office because they're going to be in the kitchen making a lot of noise and distracting. So we will meet in there and the teen class will meet in the choir room. Uh, this Wednesday, the friendship group is going to Henderson to pick apples. Uh, this is probably the last day to get your tickets for turkey stew, is that right? Through Saturday, okay. All right. And um, Lutheran Youth Day, if you have um, youth that want to go or you want to go with your youth to a football game, uh, the Lutheran Youth Day includes a bunch of different things. It's not just a football game. Um, I can get you more information about that. Uh, please also note uh, the Lutheran Men in Mission Barbecue and that you can now access that order form from the website or you can call the office to place your order. And Luther Ridge is offering a women's two different weekends for a women's retreat in March and it would be a great way to to uh, gather together both as the women in our congregation, but also with women over, Lutheran women over the, across the Carolinas. Uh, I'd also like you to take a minute and look at the church finance page that's printed in your bulletin every week. If you look on page um, 14, you will see how much money we've had to transfer from investments into the current accounts to pay the bills of the church. That does not include the most recent transfer of funds that was approved by the council on Thursday night. Um, our giving is down significantly over the past years and we just want to make sure that you are aware of what is happening with our finances um, as we continue to move forward. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Yes. Okay, if you would like to help with the turkey stew by peeling potatoes and onions and getting things ready, they will be, uh, Miss Barbara will be at the Dowd's ha Hash House beginning at 2 o'clock on Thursday. Yes, Miss, Miss Neal. Right, the Cat Worship and Music Committee meeting will meet at Monday the 19th at 2 o'clock. Um, and that will be for planning uh, music and also talking about David and his, uh, his decision to move on. And we thank you for all of your work and we're not going to make you feel guilty about that at all. <laughs> All right, I invite you to now please stand for our final hymn. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. And Ben, there is a great part for you here. Follow Neil on that great part.
Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God.